This week we'll be reading a selection of poems by Emily Dickinson and reading a chapter from Mark Twain's book, Roughing It, as well as an essay and some of his, some of his fiction from Letters from the Earth. And this is a poem by Emily Dickinson called Tell All the Truth But Tell It Slant in its poem 1263. She writes, Tell all the truth, but tell it slant. Success in circuit lies too bright for our infirm delight. The truth's superb surprise, as lightning to the children eased with explanation kind, the truth must dazzle gradually, or every man be blind. Mark Twain wrote in his book Roughing It, which is the, this is the first paragraph from chapter 23, he writes, if there is any life that is happier than the life we led on our timber ranch for the next two or three weeks, it must be a sort of life which I have not read in books or experienced in person. We did not see a human being but ourselves during the time, or hear any sounds but those that were made by the wind and the waves, the sign of the pines, and now and then the far-off thunder of an avalanche. And that's from his chapter 23 in Roughing It. And let's start by talking about Emily Dickinson. So you're going to read the introduction to her chapter, and you're going to read a selection of her poems. And a few things about her, although she worked in obscurity during her lifetime, Dickinson is now recognized as one of the greatest American poets. She lived in her parents' house for all but one year of her life, but stayed connected to the outside world through voracious reading and correspondence. Dickinson broke poetic rules much in the way Whitman had done previously and used dashes and syntactical fragments to convey what she wanted the reader to understand. And she said she wrote in a way she felt represented her own truth. And while you're reading Emily Dickinson's poems, I want you to write down lines or moments where you think she's trying to get the reader to understand something without stating what that exact understanding should be. I want you to write down images you find compelling, and while you're looking over her body of work, even pay attention to the way the poems look on the page. Most of her poems are short. Is this effective? I want you to compare her writing to Whitman's. Both of these writers were playing with form and content. Which one do you think does it more successfully? And these notes and observations will help you with your discussion board post for this week. Mark Twain's the other writer that we're studying this week, and he was born Samuel Clemens, but later changed his name to Mark Twain, which was a riverboat term that meant safe water. Twain grew up in the Mississippi River town of Hannibal, Missouri. He was a voracious traveler from the age of 18, and those experiences built the foundation for his writing, both his fiction and nonfiction. Although that memory of his Missouri boyhood was a place he went back to over and over again. And it was in these boyhood experiences that he mined the material for both the adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Twain became world famous, traveled around the world giving lectures, wrote voraciously fiction, nonfiction, criticism, and was referred to by his friend William Dean Howells as being the Lincoln of our literature. And while you're reading Mark Twain, I want you to underline lines that you like, what are ideas that he expresses in his work, which some of his work was written over 140 years ago, ideas that still feel very contemporary. Think about the way Twain uses description to paint a picture of the place that he's describing. And why do you think his descriptions are so effective. I want you to compare the way he uses language to the way Whitman and Dickinson use language. Do you notice any similarities? And again, these notes and observations will help with your discussion board post for the week. Have a great week and happy reading.